certain types of contract are unenforceable because they are contrary to public policy, contrary to the public good. One of the most significant types of contract void for being contrary to public policy is a contract for the restraint of trade. The reason for this is that the public usually obtains a benefit from free and open economic competition, so anything that restricts that competition is dangerous. At the same time, though, some restraint of trade can be valid. If you own a hairdresser's, you wouldn't want to employ a staff member only to see them impress your clients and then set up their own salon next door and steal your clients away. So when is restraint of trade valid and when is it contrary to public policy? Thorsten Nordenfeldt was an inventor and manufacturer of weapons, in particular machine guns. He sold his company to the Maxim Weapons Company and the contract included a provision that Nordenfeldt would not, during the term of 25 years, engage either directly or indirectly in the trade or business of a manufacturer of guns, gun mountings or carriages, gunpowder, explosives or ammunition. Expressed this way, the restriction meant that Nordenfeldt couldn't carry on this trade anywhere in the world. He challenged that aspect of the provision. The court used this case as an opportunity to revisit the rules for the restraint of trade. Lord McNaughton said, The public have an interest in every person's carrying on his trade freely. So has the individual. All interference with individual liberty of action in trading and all restraints of trade of themselves, if there is nothing more, are contrary to public policy and therefore void. That is the general rule. But there are exceptions. Restraints of trade and interference with individual liberty of action may be justified if the restriction is reasonable. Reasonable, that is, in reference to the interests of the parties concerned and reasonable in reference to the interests of the public. So the rule arising from this case is that when considering a restraint of trade provision, we need to ask two things. Is the provision reasonable as between the parties? And is the provision reasonable by reference to the interests of the public? If it is reasonable in both these ways, then a restraint of trade clause will be valid. If not, it will be invalid. Mm -hmm.